the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, last week I uh, tried to get some, be a little humorous. And that's something I miss. It's been a while, probably 10 years or longer since. It seems like people's lost their humor, their sense of humor. Quentin and I talked about that a while back. And, uh, but last week I said, ha, ha, ha. And the Saturday night, you guys didn't get it. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. It has medically been proven that the body does not know the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh. So when you're sitting there and you're feeling it, just ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. And before long, you'll be laughing at yourself. <laughs> so that's what that was about. So, you know, it's, it's been a different week. And I told Misty the other day, I said, you know what, Misty? I've survived I don't know how many beer viruses. <laughs> and I'm still here. And we're going to survive this one. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Sense of humor. Let's go. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's, start. Let's say Psalms 23. I'm going to come from Psalms 23 in the Passion, and then we'll get to our introduction. In the Passion. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I will always have more than enough. This week I've been saying the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not fear. Verse 2, he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. Verse 3. That's where he restores and receives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name, Amen. so that we can be glorifying his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of the deepest darkness, fear will not conquer me, for you, Lord, already have. You remain close to me and lead me through, through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. Amen. You become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? So why would we fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Man, don't threaten me with a good time. Let's go. Come quickly, Lord. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you for this time of word. We thank you for everything that you're showing us in these times and in these days. Lord, you are on our side. No weapon formed against us will prosper. We stand in your promises. We have your blessings. And we are strong. And we will come out being leaders in this church, not this building, in the church. All of those that are t watching and listening online or on the radio next week or however it is that this word comes to them. Lord, for we talk the truth, the truth being the Lord, 
we thank you and praise you, God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Man, that was strange. Okay. This is a different service, but it's the same word, same God. Welcome to the Lighthouse. We are a non-denominational, Bible-believing, truth-teaching body of Christ, a virtual church this week. We wield the mighty razor-sharp sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken word of God. Yeah. We believe in the salvation-giving work of the cross, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, which is the good news of the gospel. We pray, praise, and support Israel. Hallelujah. We are confessors of the Word of God. We are doers of the Word of God. And we are cheerful givers who believe in the abundant harvest. We believe in marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. We are calling in the harvest of souls to God in our region. Welcome to the lighthouse. Welcome to the wetlands of New Mexico. Welcome to the home of the Ratone Family Tent Revival. Amen. Different service, same God. We have just a couple of brief announcements. We want to talk about tithes. We need to keep our tithes going and our offerings. You can text to give, which it's also about the same on the app if you've been able to get the app. Or you can mail a check to 1800 Hospital Drive, Raton, New Mexico, 87740. If, but keep your tithes and offerings coming. It's not for us, but it's for you. It's for you. The Bible studies are on hold, but keep tuned in to your app, and uh, we'll be making announcements and uh, possibly doing some stuff virtually. Sunday morning service tomorrow at 10. Tune in, app, Facebook, YouTube. I think that's about it this week. Fear not, gossip not. John 10.10 10 in the King James, New King James. We're talking about the thief. We're identifying the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus has come that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. What does the thief come to do? To kill and destroy. To steal, kill, and destroy. That is the thief. In Proverbs 6.31, people do not despise a thief. If he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving, let me remind you, the thief in 32... People, oh, I'm sorry. People, this is 30. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. 31. Sorry about that, guys. Yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone the other day. He was talking about how much he was losing. And I said, you know this is an, a, coming from the enemy. And I said, do you know who the enemy is? And he said, yes, Satan. The thief... Whatever he steals now, he has to repay yep. sevenfold. Right. We are standing on that. Yes. Last week I was talking about Jairus, Jairus in Mark 5, 37 through 40 in the message. I picked out two little sayings that, that this was what Jesus said. The gossips looking for a story and busybody grief and gossip. If everybody remembers the story, Jesus went to Jairus' house, and when he got there, they had said that the girl, was his daughter, was already dead. Jesus said, no, she's not. She's sleeping. And they ridiculed him and la laughed at him. And he, he spoke to the gossips looking for a story and the busybody grief and gossipers and ran them out. In Proverbs 6 and 16 through 19, these six things the Lord hates, yes, seven, are an abomination to him. 
a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Of those seven things, what are we mostly dealing with? The tongue, the mouth, the gossip. God hates. And, and I don't see anything in there. I don't see murderers. I don't see adulterers. I don't see uh, thieves. I don't see addic addictions. I don't see all the things that we're always wanting to point to. I'm sh God does not like those things. Duh. But we are talking about the tongue in several of these things that he does not like. So be careful as we go forward to be in, just be careful of what conversations you pick up. I have heard some really crazy stuff and I refuse to get in those conversations. I either change it or walk away. I either change the conversation or I walk away. And if they're offended, sorry, because I'm not going to be a busybody gossip, and there's plenty of room for that, and we don't need it right now. I don't know if anybody caught the uh, president's update Friday, but as he was uh, giving an update, and the, the media, the press was asking him questions, they were really rude, and you could hear that they were trying to, to me it sounded like they were trying to generate fear in the questions that they were asking. We do not have fear, people. We do not have fear in these days. If you are a believing, God-fearing, Jesus-trusting and believing Christian, you do not have fear. When you have a moment that you think of fear, or it does pass across your mind, what do we do? We take those thoughts captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ, for we have the mind of Christ. Can you bring up 2 Timothy 1, 7 in the Passion? Going off the notes, going left turn, Albuquerque. I love the way this is said. We've heard this many times in the last few weeks. We're probably going to hear it again tonight. We're going to hear it in the weeks to come. But this scripture, I always, it's always coming to me. For God will never give you the spirit of fear. This is not from God. And I'm going to address this People, I've heard people saying this is from God. It is not from God. And we will address that at a different time. But God gives you the Holy Spirit who resides inside of you, who gives you mighty power. What is that mighty power? The power that raised Jesus from the dead. Just a little bit of power. Love and self-control. He doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives us the mighty power and love and self-control. So anytime these, in the days ahead that any of these thoughts cross your mind, take your thoughts captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ, for you have the mind of Christ, and God will never give you the spirit of fear, but of the Holy, He will give you the Holy Spirit who resides in me, and that gives me mighty power, love, and self-control. Amen? Amen. Different service, same God. Amen. Right. Different service, same God. We'll be here for you. If you need prayer or you need to talk to any of us, message through Facebook, and EJ will get us the message, and we will pray for you or call you or whatever you need. So don't hesitate to reach out. Amen. One of the things the enemy is trying to do is isolate us. Yes. We will not be isolated. No. We will not do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
when you want to pray? You bet. All right. Thank you, sir. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for the opportunity to still get together in your presence, Lord. Lord, we are, as believers, one body under you, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we're going to receive the promises that you've given us tonight, Lord, over our families, over our homes, over our region, over our whole country, Lord, that it's okay. Everything is okay. In Jesus' name, it's okay. And we're going to praise your name. We're going to worship you tonight and every day. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are going to lift up a shout of praise tonight because we are not of those who back down. The kingdom of God is still going forward. We are still preaching the word and speaking the word. Hallelujah. We are going to praise your name, Jesus. We are going to lift your name as a banner above the nations tonight.
eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you. None like you.
is the name above all other names. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We praise you, God. I thank you for your presence in this place tonight. We just worship your name, lift up your name. We praise you for all that you are. We give voice to your praises. We give voice to your word. We refuse to agree with the darkness. We stay in agreement with you, God. Thank you for your word. That is the place that we stay rooted and planted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wow. All right. 
um, I had someone ask me, uh, how do you preach uh, when there's no one there? And I've preached a lot less than this before. Uh, and probably the best services we ever had. <laughs> and, and I say that because speaking God's word and declare it over this region is powerful. And sure, I think there's value. There's great value in us coming together corporately, absolutely. Uh, but we are the church. You know, you are the church sitting at home. You are the church, the few of us that are here. You are the church um, driving to and fro. When you're in Christ, you're part of the church. And that's, that's what's important. And so what Satan means for evil, God is going to turn to good. Right. Why? Because hmm, we love him and we're called unto his purpose. All right. Praise God. Father, I do thank you for being with us tonight, Father. It's so much more important that, that we seek you wherever we are, whatever we're doing, Father. As long as we're following you, that's exactly where we need to be. I thank you for that, Father. Lead us in your Holy Spirit and wisdom tonight to declare your word across this region, Father. And to be the point of the spirit you've called us to be, Father. Casting down darkness. Casting down that spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, now, Jim said it. Uh, the, the scripture in uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but there is a spirit of fear. It doesn't come from God, but there is a spirit of fear. And it wants to steal all your power. It wants to take away any love you have, and it wants to make you act crazy. And that's what we're seeing today. But you know what? We're rebuking that spirit in the name of Jesus, and we're declaring his word across this region, across these airwaves. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So let's go to Philippians 4. I preached these verses before, but boy, it's sure time. It's time to eat some meat and potatoes. We need some spiritual nourishment for strength. So Philippians 4, I'm reading verse 4. I'm in the New King James first. It said, Rejoice in the Lord always. That means a month ago we need to be rejoicing, two months ago, three months ago, four months ago, and today. Always is always. Always is always. And then he says it again. Again, I will say rejoice. Amen. Verse 5 says, let your gentleness be known to all men. Let your gentleness be known to all men. That word gentleness means soft in your action. Church, we're not soft by any stretch. We are a force to be reckoned with. But our actions are directed by the Prince of Peace. We bring peace to a situation, and therefore we can bring a softness, a gentleness, a kindness to everything we do. But with power. Amen? But with power. I think that's what meekness means, just so you know. But that's another sermon. Verse 6, it's, well, it says, the Lord is at hand. That's going to be good when I read in a different translation. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. So it says, rejoice always and be anxious for nothing. If you're, if you're rejoicing always, it's hard to be anxious. Because as you're rejoicing, you're rejoicing in Him, always. And if you're rejoicing in Him, you will not be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, that supplication means deasis, it's a seeking, asking, and entreating the Lord. You're seeking Him. That's the supplication. You're seeking Him. You're praying. You're seeking Him. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. See, there's going to be situations that you're going to come against. <laughs> you know, and everybody's got this virus on their minds. But guys, there's hard things every day. Sure. Um, you know, I have been, I don't know why I thought of this. I have sat at too many uh, bedsides where a person was going home. And let me just tell you something. 
I've been at a few where there was some rejoicing happening because they knew where they were headed. Now, in the natural, you'd think, oh, my gosh, Monty, this is a bad situation right here. No, it wasn't. There was rejoicing going on. How can that be? Well, because <laughs> those people knew whom they believed. They, know who, they knew that they were just a visitor here. They had a purpose here. But when they had finished their race, they're like, okay, let's go. Let's get the victor's crown. Amen? And it's all perspective. It's that perspective. But when you have something to be anxious about in front of you, cast it aside in the name of Jesus. It said, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts. It doesn't say it might guard. It doesn't say that, well, it'll make you feel better while you're fighting through it. No, it says it will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. That's your soul, man. See, peace acts as a guard to your soul. Your mind, will, and emotions will be guarded if you let peace guard it. And who is the Prince of Peace? That's Jesus. It says that in Isaiah 9. He is the Prince of Peace. And he's the one, and it's his kingdom that we're advancing. He's the one we serve, and it's his kingdom that we are advancing. And then in verse 8 it says, finally, so he's adding to what he just said, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. You see, what's that saying? An idle mind is the devil's workshop. And that's a saying. But understand something. Your mind will be occupied by something all the time. All the time. It will be occupied by something. And if you're me, it'll be occupied by 30 things. <laughs> but let me tell you something. You can allow the natural world to occupy the entirety of your thinking. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to get natural results. Because if your mind is focused on the natural events, that means your soul man is being filled up with the natural world. Which means you're going to operate in the natural world. Which means you're going to get natural results. And guys, we serve a supernatural God. See, I'm not looking for natural results. I mean, natural results, I mean, you know, we could get people a lot smarter than us to tell us what to do, do this, do this, here's the formula, here's the recipe, and you're going to get this. Well, Jim Ritchie said in Proverbs 6, we can get some sevenfold action. That's not natural. I mean, somebody takes some, well, I want to take it back. One for one, that's natural. I'll beat you up, I'll take back what you stole from me. One for one, that's natural. Guys, we, li we, we serve a supernatural king. We don't operate under the natural realm. I mean, we're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Hear what I'm saying. And yes, hey, as we said, listen, we chose to follow the instructions of our government to honor them. And I'd have done it regardless of who was president, just so you know. I would have. People ask me that. Would you have done it if, if, some, if some other party? Yeah, I would have. Why? Because I wasn't worried about what they were saying. I worried about what he was saying. And see, by asking him, now I can follow what he's saying. Am I making sense? All right. All right. Well, good. We got to fill our mind with his things, with his word. We have to. We have to. In 1 Corinthians 16, it's 8 and 9. I, I, I quote this all the time, but I wanted to show the scriptures. People need to see this. It's Paul writing to him. He says, but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. You see, opposition leads to and brings opportunity. It, it, it was a Wolf's Law. I, I've talked about this. Learned it in chiropractic school. If you have resistance, the bone matrix will get stronger. Without resistance, the bone matrix will be weaker and it'll break. Guys, that's how we're built. 
Listen, we have to take, count it all joy when various trials and tribulations come. Not if they come, it's when they come. Why? Because the testing of your faith, the opposition, the opposition that's testing your faith, and it's not God that's doing it, but your faith will be tested. Why? Because we're in this world, we're not of this world. And guys, this is a matter of faith. See, when you're battling fear, you got to speak faith. Because when you're speaking faith, you're speaking the word. When you're speaking the word, you're speaking Jesus. When you're speaking Jesus, you got the Prince of Peace, and now fear cannot come nigh you. Amen. And see, that's just the word. And and world needs to hear this. The world needs to hear this. Because look, it's not about a vaccine. It's not about this or not about that. We're not fighting a virus. We're fighting an enemy that wants to steal the truth from you so that they can kill you and destroy you. But you arrest the thief, and anything he stole in the natural, hey, seven times. But you know what? You can't just say that and say, well, I hope that happens. Right. I mean, you've got to believe. You've got to understand what the Word says, and then you've got to apply yourself in faith. You've got to fill your mind with God's Word, because then you pick up the shield of faith. Listen, doesn't do you any good to have a shield of faith sitting behind the door. Because the enemy comes in, get hit and beat you and say, yeah, but I got a shield of faith. Quit hitting me. I got a shield of faith. It's over here. It's over here. But you're beating me to death. Well, you have to take up your shield of faith. It says in taking up in Ephesians. I'm off track, but that's what it says. You have to take up your shield of faith. And that is God's word. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by his word. Guys, that's why we're big on the word here. We're big on the word. You know, this, none of this stuff comes as a surprise to me. I understand that. I've been talking about preaching end times prophecy. Listen, we have to understand the signs and the seasons. And locusts 45 miles wide eating up Asia and Africa, these things, duh. Yeah. <laughs> Earthquakes in various regions. Like I, we've shown that years ago. We showed the number of earthquakes. It's on a logarithmic scale. Yeah. It's increased. These are birth pains. Yeah. These are the end times. Right. That's why, let me read this in, let me see where it says that. In Philippians 4, 4 through 9 again, I'm reading now the NLT. Let me read 4. It says, always be full of joy in the Lord. Yeah. You can do that. Because he is good all the time. And he says, I say it again, rejoice. That means I said it because you need to hear me again. Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Church, we need to be considerate as we walk through these times. There's people who don't know the truth and they're scared. You need to be considerate to them. You need to be gentle with them. You need to ask them, do you need me to go get something for you? Do you need me to help you? Is there a way I can do something? You know, and then gently share Christ. Share Christ with them. That thing is goofy tonight. <laughs> Share Christ with them in a way God tells you, with gentleness, being considerate to them, because we are a soft people who function in power and force. We're not soft in, in you know, against anything. We're meek. We have power and it's under control. You understand? Mm. And then what it says, it says, remember the Lord is coming soon. See, I don't know when he's coming. I don't know the day or the hour. But I can tell you there's a season. There's a season. I've been studying this all my ministerial life, which has been, I don't know, since probably 29, I guess, which was only a couple years ago. <laughs> Define couple. I'm not going to do that for y'all. <laughs> it's more than two, but it's a couple. He is coming soon. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Lord, I need peace. I need peace. I know I'm supposed to have peace, but I don't have peace because I'm anxious about this stuff and I don't know what to do. I'm feeling pretty double-minded. And you know what? He says, yeah, you are. So start speaking me. Start speaking truth. You know, there's no plague come nigh my dwelling. No plague come nigh my, my, you know, I was talking to a lady whose mom's in the nursing home. I said, I'll pray for her. The blood of Jesus over, is over every person at these nursing homes in the name of Jesus. They are kept. They're protected. I've been declaring over this region. Yeah. Get me wound up and started. Because there is no virus. <laughs> 
Oh, there's no weapon of the enemy that's going to be formed that's going to prosper against us. How come? Because our right standing is of the Lord. And we say that every week because I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Mm. And thank him for all he has done. I like that. Give, give him thanks. He's the one keeping us. And if he doesn't keep you, you're not kept. I figured that out a long time ago. If he doesn't keep you, you're not kept anyway. All right. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. But you have to live there. You have to live there. You have to be there and stay there. See, I want supernatural results for this region. And the things that I believe the Lord is going to do in this region, in the natural, it probably doesn't make sense. But I don't serve a natural God. I serve a supernatural God. But here's the thing with serving a supernatural God. He doesn't follow what I want to do. I follow what he wants to do. See? And that's the key. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to cancel service. I mean, for people. Did not want to, and he knew it. I said, God, I'm not scared. And he said, this ain't got nothing to do with you. And so, uh, the thing is, it's way more important that I be obedient to him. Then I try to, you know, I, I could try to strut my faith. Well, I got faith, nothing's going to happen because I speak, you know, uh, that's not gentle. That's not considerate. <laughs> that's not wisdom from above either. That's pride. And I've read the book, and it says he resists the proud. Man, I do not want to stand in a place where I'm being resisted by the creator of the universe. No way. I, I, I have made enough mistakes in my life. I'm not doing that. Listen, Lord, I'll serve you. If you say, you know, <laughs> you're going to preach on the corner by yourself, I'll do it. Because it's all about him. Because he's supernatural. See, he can make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. He'll make a way for you <laughs> where there doesn't seem to be a way. But you've got to listen to him. And you've got to live in Christ Jesus. But living in Christ Jesus is not living in fear. Living in fear, you will act crazy. And again, guys, we cannot, the church, we have to be that light in a dark world where people will say, what, why aren't you guys afraid? Don't you see this number, that number, something else? And I'm like, listen, I, I see the Lord and I see what the word has told me, what he has told me. And, and he says, favor surrounds me like a shield. And there's going to be doubters, guys. And, and honestly, listen, it doesn't bother me when there's when unbelievers doubt. They, they would doubt. They don't have the Holy Spirit leading them into truth. They're going to doubt. That's all right. But guys, I have oh, so many people that are my brothers and sisters. They doubt. Let's be gentle with them, too. Let's love them right where they're at. Let, let's, don't be moved by anyone else. Don't be moved by anyone else. Don't be moved by your circumstance. Don't be moved by people, thoughts, opinions, this and that. Be moved by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Be moved by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Don't be moved by situations or circumstances. They, they change all the time. God doesn't change. Be led. We don't just go places. We're sent. And see, the thing is, he goes before us to make a way and then what does it say he goes behind me to take care of the mistakes I already made in my past because that's the God I serve and guys I want you to know him I want you to know him that way the, the world attributes to God so many things that he doesn't have anything to do with but I'm telling you we serve an awesome mighty powerful God that is interested in you I said it last week you're his favorite you're his favorite and he, you are so ask him things. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm not feeling peace, but you're the prince of peace. Well, keep talking to him. Your feelings will change. Yeah. They will. They will. But you've got to be honest with yourself. I have so many, many people come to me and say, ah, oh, that word stuff doesn't work. I say, well, I know it does, so there's something wrong. You did something different. Yes. That's right. Well, look at this. this. This here hasn't healed yet. Yeah, but God's not done with me. Yeah. God's not done with me. Listen, I know I'm going to heaven, but I ain't been there yet in the physical. 
<laughs> See, but I know where I'm going because I know whom I have believed. Amen. And guys, it's so much more important to understand that and to walk in that faith because without faith, you're never going to have any power. And so many people, and Lord, forgive me, but I'm, I'm just going to say it. So many people want the power without the faith. They want the power. They want the power. They want this to happen. They want that to happen. You know, they'll copy this one. They'll copy that one. They'll try to do this. They'll stand on their head trying to get to some power. If you want power, go to the source. And stay with him, because that's the only way you're going to have any power. You've got to stay right beside him. You've got to stay plugged in. Yeah. Jim Ritchie always said, we be plugged in all the time. Because if I go this way, I unplug from him, I don't have any power. I've got to stay right with him. When we were praising, and the Lord was showing me, um, I had moving hay. Now listen, everybody gets after me. They're like, now listen, you be careful. You, uh, da, 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 okay, fine, fine. We had to get a, a stack. Anybody know about haystacks? And, and it was up pretty tall at the top. And I, I can't lift the hay, the wind. I got two boys that can do it really good. But to make it efficient, I had to boogity boogity to the top and start basically pushing it down because there was no stair step it was just down and I had to start making a stair step right that's pretty tall up there I don't like heights I used to be very afraid of heights and I've talked about iron working and being up and stuff and I learned in my younger years if my hands could get a hold of something all fear would leave me like, I can be somewhere high as long as my hand is onto something. So I just grabbed onto the top top of that barn, and I'm kicking that stuff off and kicking it, and, and we're getting it, and, and then um, reaching. So as long as I had a hold to something, I wasn't afraid. Yeah, he was showing me that. Guys, you got to get a hold of him. You won't be afraid. Now, what's the situ did the situation change? I'm still up there, and I can promise you all, if you think I could hang on for very long, <laughs> this big boy, I'd be in trouble. So it doesn't make sense that holding on should quell all my fears. It doesn't make sense in the natural. And yes, it does. Yet it does. You hold on to him. You watch that fear flee. Because that spirit of fear cannot stand against the king of kings. They were defeated at the cross, and they know it. Mm -hmm. See, they know it. They're just trying to get you to think that they're not defeated. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to fool you mm -hmm. for mass destruction. Don't, don't follow. Don't follow that. Grab a hold of him. Grab a hold of him. You, you're holding on to him. You watch that fear leave. Yeah. But you've got to grab a hold. And see, the thing is, you, you can't put your hand out and say, well, I want to stay here. And I want you to come to me, Lord, and hold me here. <laughs> On my terms, God, we'll do this. Yeah. He's like, I love you. I do. I want to come get you, but it's not safe for you to stay there. So I'm right here. You come to me. See, because he knows what's best for you. And he'll, he'll find you. He'll come. He'll woo you. But he loves you too much to leave you where you're at. So we as a church have to grow beyond where we're at. We have to. I was looking at this. I'm almost done. Matthew 13, 54 through 58. Man, I'm looking at my end times prophecy stuff I'm going to be teaching. And I, I'm excited because he is coming soon. And I'm excited. I'm excited for the things that are going to happen. Because there is going to be a harvest of souls that the world has never seen. And I'm excited, because I'm excited for people to know Jesus. But Matthew 13, 54. And coming into his own country, this is Jesus. He was in Nazareth. Yeah, I'm in the Amplified. He taught in their synagogues so that they were amazed and bewildered wonder, with bewildered wonder. And they said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And do not all his sisters live here among us? Where then did this man get all this? See, they were looking in the natural. And they took offense at him. 
they were repelled and hindered from acknowledging his authority. Mm. They were functioning in some pride there. Yeah. And caused to stumble. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. <laughs> How silly is that? And he did not do many works of power there. You think Jesus all of a sudden lost his ability to function in power? No. No. Because of their unbelief, their lack of faith in the divine mission of Jesus. Hmm. See, there was no power because there was unbelief. I want to see some powerful things happen on the Lord's behalf, advancing his kingdom. I have seen some. And you know what? Even though I was looking for them, they always surprised me. Why? Because it was never on my terms. See, it was always on his terms. And it was always like, Lord, how? I knew you were going to do this, but man, I didn't see that coming. Wow. I knew you were going to. I knew you were. I had faith. I had faith. I knew you were going to. But man, how did you do that? And he says, Monty, I want to do so many more things, but my people are my body on this earth. And yes, I'm their head, but they need to believe me in order to function in my power. They have to understand my authority, my kingship. They have to understand that there's a way I want to do things. You see, it's not about getting from A to B. You know, the church needs to get from A to B. We want to be at B. B is the place we're supposed to be. That's where Jesus wants us. And he's like, yes, that's, that's, that's where I want you. But you have to understand, the way we get there is my way. See, because he has a way that is the best way. It's the most powerful way. And it's going to reach the most people. Guys, we have to... <laughs> We have to acknowledge him as king in all our ways, in all our ways, in everything we're doing. We have to acknowledge his headship in all our ways. Because it's not about the end result. You know, we want the end result. We want the end result. We want the end result. Guys, the end result is obedience to him. You want, Pastor Burt said this. You know the safest place for you to be? Wherever he tells you. You want to be kept from all the weapons of the enemy? Be where God tells you. You're, that's the safest place for you to be. I, I spent, I don't know how long, talking to Pastor Terry this morning. And they're, they're doing good. They're doing really good. And he's doing well. You know, he travels the world. And it, it kind of bums him out because they've, kind of, they've shut it down. But you know what? He knows the Lord has a plan. Yeah. See, he knows the Lord has a plan. And it was just uplifting talking to him. Why? Because he knows whom he has believed. He, he knows, hey, I'm on assignment. Yeah. I'm on assignment. And maybe my assignment is he's been ministering to more people at home. Well, that's where he was supposed to be. Amen. You think, well, Lord, yeah, man, Lord, we needed him in Uganda for those thousands and tens of thousands of people that you're going to reach. And yet he's there in Sulphur Springs, Texas, ministering to the people God wanted him to minister to. How cool is that? And we think in our natural, well, well, 10,000 people has to be more than, than just, just the number. No. Guys, the, stop thinking in the natural. You've got to start thinking in the supernatural. If we want supernatural results to thwart this plan of the enemy, we got to get on. Mm, we got to be spirit led. We've got to be spirit led. And that's just walking in love and obedience. And that's walking in gentleness. Yeah. Mm, the fruit of the spirit is gentleness. It's kindness. It's peace. Right? I got to say them in order. It's love. It's joy. It's peace. It's patience. It's kindness. It's goodness. It's faithfulness gentleness and self-control. Did I get them all? Did I double up on one? I started thinking about what I was saying and I got in trouble. That's what I'm saying. Quit thinking. Quit thinking. Just listen. Listen to what he's saying. Be encouraged in this time. Guys, there's great opportunity. There's great opportunity. There's great opportunity. There's great opportunity. 
When people get settled down and that spirit of fear starts moving away from them, they're going to be receptive to Him to hold on to. Yeah. And they grab a hold of Him, their fears are going to ease. That's right. Because that fear can't hang out where the Prince of Peace is hanging out. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Did I get there? I kind of need Sarah because I can look at her and she can give me the ooh, that didn't make sense. Uh -huh. I mean, when I'm preaching for myself on the radio, I'm like, Lord, does that make sense? He's like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Keep speaking my word. I say, okay. Nah. <laughs> Monty, sometimes keep listening to me. <laughs> Guys, keep listening to him. Just keep listening to him. Sarah's going to say the blessings. She's going to say the blessings. Oh, we got to do our scripture confessions. I, I always almost forget them, and yet we never do, because I, I got people telling me. <laughs> Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, for my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I do will prosper, for I am like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. With what measure I meet, it is measured unto me. I sow bountifully, therefore I reap bountifully. I give cheerfully, and my God has made all grace abound toward me. And I, having all sufficiency of all things, do abound to all good works." No evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. And in my pathway there is life and there is no death. I am a doer of the word of God and am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do because I am a doer of the word of God. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. Therefore, I establish his word upon this earth. Hmm. And there is no virus or germ that can stand in the presence of the living God. Amen. 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 All right. Babe. That was an appropriately timed word. Excellent. Thank you, Lord, that your word is so very powerful and such a blessing to us. You know, the, the word of God is always good, but it really becomes precious when you're going through things <laughs> and every everything that Monty read tonight it was precious and it revealed God's heart for us and his heart for us is that we have freedom and joy and health and peace and he is there waiting to share that with us we just have to choose him so I, I get to read to you uh, speak over you tonight the blessing and again it's super precious I went and I went and said, okay, Lord, I want to know what you have to say about um, times such as these. So I'm going to read these over you, speak these over you, and I encourage you to soak them in. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown us his amazing grace. May he make you strong and bold. May you not be afraid or frightened of the unknown, nor of risks, nor of your enemies, nor the enemies of God. For Adonai, your God, goes with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. May you find rest and peace in knowing the Lord keeps his vigil for his chosen ones. May you likewise keep vigil to honor the Lord. May the Lord protect you, care for you, and guard you like the pupil of his eye. You are blessed who trust the Lord for protection. As you look over your situation, may you not be afraid of whoever or whatever appears to be a threat to you. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and do spiritual warfare for your friends, your families, and your homes. May God open your eyes so you can see the resources he has dispatched to meet your need. May the Lord train your hands for battle. May your arms be able to bend a bow of bronze. Because God is the one who has called you, he will enable you to achieve results beyond any level you think to be possible. May the angel of the Lord encamp all around you and deliver you because you fear God. 
May you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and may you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is your shield and rampart. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our 